Let's start with a general overview of MRI. The single steps of an MRI examination can be described quite simply. The patient is placed in a magnet, a radio wave is sent in, the radio wave is turned off, the patient emits a signal, which is received and used for reconstruction of the picture. Let's take a look at these steps in detail. What happens when we put a patient into the magnet of an MR machine? To understand this, it is necessary to at least know some very basic physics, even though this may seem to be boring. As we all know, atoms consist of a nucleus and a shell, which is made up of electrons. In the nucleus, besides other things, there are protons, little particles that have a positive electrical charge, whatever that may actually be. These protons are analogous to little planets. Like the Earth, they are constantly turning or spinning around an axis. Or, as one says, protons possess a spin. The positive electrical charge, being attached to the proton, naturally spins around with it. And what is a moving electrical charge? It is an electrical current. Now, you may remember from your physics at school that an electrical current induces, causes a magnetic force or magnetic field. So, where there is an electrical current, there is also a magnetic field. Thus, the proton has its own magnetic field and can be seen as a little bar magnet. Let's review what we have learned. Normally, protons are aligned in a random fashion. This, however, changes when they are exposed to a strong external magnetic field. The protons, being little magnets, align themselves in the external magnetic field like a compass needle in the magnetic field of the Earth. However, there is an important difference. For the compass needle, there is only one way to align itself with the magnetic field. For the protons, however, there are two. The protons may align with their south and north poles in the direction of the external field parallel to it, or they may point in the completely opposite direction, anti-parallel. These types of alignment are on different energy levels. To explain this, a man can align himself parallel to the magnetic field of the Earth, in other words, walking on his feet. Or he can align himself anti-parallel, in the opposite direction. Both states are on different energy levels. In other words, need different amounts of energy. Walking on one's feet is undoubtedly less exhausting, takes less energy, than walking on one's hands. Naturally, the preferred state of alignment is the one that needs less energy. So, more protons are on the lower energy level parallel to the external magnetic field, walking on their feet, so to speak. A smaller number is on the higher energy level, anti-parallel, walking on their hands. The difference in number is, however, very small and depends on the strength of the applied magnetic field. To get a rough idea, for about 10 million protons, walking on their hands, there are about 10 million and 7 walking on their feet. The difference 007 is probably easy to remember, isn't it?